Episode one, spiked up, Darren and Matt. Uh, I've been begging Darren for about four and a half years to do a podcast, and now that we're in the social distancing, 10 feet away or seven feet away, um, he's finally agreed to it. We thought it'd be fun to, you know, kind of come to you and I can ask Darren some of your questions that you have and questions I have, and then we can just kind of have fun. The, the, the main thing on this is we're just going to be ourselves, have fun, but, um, you know, we want to keep people informed. Um, I think we can kind of, Darren can kind of share some of the news that, that, you know, has been relayed from him and the MLS the league sports in general, but also I thought, you know, us being kind of having families and being dads, we could kind of have some fun about, you know, what it's like being quarantined. So spiked up was the name Darren. What would you didn't like that name you wanted? Yeah. Hi Matt. Yeah. Hello everyone. It's uh, good to be here. Uh, it's nice to get out of the house to be fair. I think like everyone, I was just laughing with Matt earlier. I've told my wife that I'm going to be here at least four hours filming this. So <laughs> at least I get a little bit of time my, without the two twins. <laughs> my, my wife said, uh, Hey, um, you're going to the training ground. Can you bring the kids? No, 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 no. Uh, we're, we're the only ones that are allowed here and our friends back here. They won't allow kids, just us. We're the only ones on the security list. So um, no, 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 no. Yeah, no I'll just share one thing. I'm going to have to coach mine because <laughs> at the start of every day, they say, is the virus still here? I say yes. And they go, yay. Because <laughs> they know that means I'm around for another well, few days. I've got to tell them it's not actually, a good thing. I was thinking we can get into this, but like, you know, you and I travel a lot. So it has to be kind of crazy for the kids to just have your dad there every day. And my, my wife has a pretty crazy job as well. Um, and, and, and it's sometimes, you know, we're both on a conference call or a Teams call or Zoom. And you're like, oh, here, Netflix, Netflix, here, Barbie's on, Barbie's on. Go watch that and be lazy for three hours. Well, I found that I didn't know about <laughs> until recently American Ninja Warrior that has been the saving grace because there's 11 series for the boys to, to go back. So we're going on a time travel in series seven at the moment and going backwards. But Yeah, I watched Tiger King. Have you watched that yet? No, I heard it's crazy. Yeah, that's uh, I watched that in one night. Um, so that was good. But uh, no, Tiger King's crazy. So you have to watch that, and then maybe next episode we can we can uh, go through that and and dissect that because that is absolutely insane. Yeah, I'll definitely do started. that. But just quickly to go back to the point where you overruled me on the name of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Quite like spiked up. Who can not like a good pun? But <laughs> I wanted to call it positive vibes for those of you who've seen the sign at uh, Mercedes Benz Stadium with a picture of Frank. So it's got positive vibes on it, and Frank with his general standard look which as we all know is not exactly the smiliest <laughs> as i learned to my cost in dad jokes with him which you know by far and away the hardest person ever to do dad jokes again is frank um but yeah so i want to positive eyes the whole idea of this is to have a bit of fun yeah. and to, to give our fans something to uh, you know take their minds off what's happening and i'll tell a frank story because i'm gonna be we, we want to be real and open on this Positive Vibes, i looked it up there's like three weed and cbd companies named positive <laughs> vibes so i said why don't we go spiked up and, and you agreed to that but can i tell you my funny frank story is um like you said he, he's very to the point he you know we we've been doing the live streams um the the you know the archive live streams and, and we had you know i had talked to frank last week hey frank you're gonna live tweet about the new york city game last week it's gonna air on saturday um or, or I think it was Wednesday, actually, Wednesday. So, we, you know, we called him last Monday. No problem, Matt. No, no problem. No problem. And, uh, and then I texted him on Wednesday. Hey, are you still good to uh, do the live tweet? And he said, uh, he never wrote back. Texted his agent, his publicist. Texted you and Carlos. Hey, can you see if you can get Frank? <laughs> so the, air, the match airs on 7.30 uh, Wednesday night. And then I, I get this call from about 7.41. Sorry, Matt, I forgot. Um, I had my other phone. Let's reschedule. No problem, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like you with dad jokes. I thought that was great. It was yeah, just no, as Frank who he is. I love it. <laughs> I did laugh. I'll share the one so I remember with you. So obviously I'd met Frank from uh, past history. We'd obviously got the contract all signed up. He's on board. We're meeting all the staff. And I remember we had a meeting. I think we we're in Philadelphia for the draft. 
um, and he got to meet you and Elena for the first time and had a chat. And, you know, Frank was, was his usual sort of uh, Dutch self in the meeting. And I remember you afterwards thinking, you know, crikey, that didn't go down too well. So, and I was thinking, wow, that's the smiliest I've seen him since he... <laughs> What's great is, I mean, if you guys don't know, I mean, we've, Darren and I have been doing this from the beginning. And so we had Tata and me and Tata were like best friends by the beginning. And we, you know, we went on media tours together and I could make him laugh. He could make me laugh and I could send him memes and things on that on WhatsApp and, and his staff. And then the first time I met Frank was at Philadelphia. We were in a conference room in like a Philadelphia hotel, like the Hyatt or something. And, and I said, Darren, that guy hates me. And you're like, no, that actually went really well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, I thought I'd start, Darren. Let's, you know, just be real. I mean, um, y you know, you've been in sports a long time. I've been in sports a long time. Um, I mean, this, there's been nothing like this. I mean, I think 9-11 might be the closest thing I've ever experienced to this when kind of things shut down. I've been through an NFL lockout. But, I mean, this is kind of just surreal, you know? Yeah, look, it's uncharted territory, I think, for everybody. And, and we're seeing that. No one really knows from a time scale when we're going to get things back to normal. And obviously, the most important thing is that people stay safe. And, you know, a big thank you to all the medical workers who are out there on the front line dealing with this because, you know, what they're doing is just incredible. But, um, you know, from it makes sports, you know, you realize that it is a smaller thing and it's not as, you know, as important as some as, as we perhaps think at the time. We sometimes tend to get in a bubble where... We think, you know, whether it's soccer, whether it's NBA, NFL, you think it's the most important thing in the world. And then something like this ha happens and you realize it's just nothing compared to. I know. It, it, it's crazy. And, you know, us having kids, I mean, like we, we, we can talk a little more about being quarantined. But, I mean, have you been to the grocery store yet? Can I also say we're doing this outside in the middle of hay fever season. So <laughs> <laughs> as we go through this, I promise Guys, you it's not Darren coronavirus. Darren does not have coronavirus. I'm he just, just got some pollen. From the, the pollen. So another great idea for doing it out here. Well, oh. hey, we got Luke. If you do a wide shot, Luke's our facility guy who lets us in. And we're the only two people allowed in the building right now. We're not allowed in the building. So I, I convinced him to let us do it outside. And there's bumblebees and things are <laughs> pollinating and the grass, the pollen's all over the place. But big shout out to him. And uh, but it is. Have you been in the grocery store yet? Yes, no, actually, just uh, feel very pleased. Got some toilet roll yesterday. <laughs> so uh, I feel like I've uh, I was, checked one off my list. I was in North Carolina for a funeral yesterday. And I went, my brother and I went to grab some barbecue because we like the North Carolina barbecue. And we wanted to, we brought a cooler and going to bring it back to Georgia. And the stock workers were stocking the toilet paper. And I'm like, oh, they have toilet paper here. I'm going to grab as many as I can. And you would have thought it looked like the Black Friday, <laughs> like the Best Buy, like the TV for three ninety nine back in the day where people were just beating the yeah. crap out of each other. It's going to date me, like the Cabbage Patch <laughs> dolls when people would fight <laughs> over. <laughs> it was it was unbelievable. And I grabbed two rolls, and, and I, I feel really good. I, I, I think I'm that'll last me another couple of weeks. I'll tell you what, though, here, it's been interesting talking to my folks back in England and where they are now in England, it's done like a fairground ride. So they'll only let you, you have to <laughs> circle up six feet apart in a snake line to get into the store. And they'll only let a certain number into the big grocery store. So we've still got, you know, I think a ways to go. I know, I know it, it's, it's insane. And, um, I've also learned my, uh, my infatuation for ramen noodles. Yeah. I've kind of gone back to that where, um, <laughs> Your student days here, yeah, it kind of brought me out of college and my wife, thinks uh, she's very unhappy because she does the Peloton every day. And while she's doing that, I'm doing a double batch of ramen noodles because they're so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I bought a whole box. I bought a whole box. It was unbelievable. Um, but no, I thought, um, you know, I, I think it'd be fun to, or not fun, because it's not a fun story because nothing's fun about coronavirus. But, you know, let's take back, you know, you and I went to the Azteca. We're in Mexico. And I think that's when... We kind of, you and I met in the lobby and we saw how serious this thing might get. And then that day kind of spiraled out of control. You know, um, we were on Twitter. Um, we kind of we kind of got the feeling of, you know, something's going on. It's getting serious in, in the U.S. And then by the time we were at the Azteca and I was in the press box and met you in the suite, um, 
the, the NBA had, had, had shut down. Yeah, and no, I can. I mean, it's pretty crazy when I think back to it because during the day, I remember talking to the players because we were out there, obviously, in Mexico City. Things were changing quite quickly, almost by the hour. And I had a chat with the players and the coaching staff after their video run through at lunchtime just to say, look, this is the latest update from MLS. Um, we'll obviously keep you posted. Um, I remember at that time we were talking to CONCACAF saying we can't do a handshake because you know, yeah. that had already been stopped in, in MLS and <laughs> all other sports, but in CONCACAF hadn't really thought about it. So they said, no, no, it's going ahead. We said, well, we're not going to do it. So that's fine. But So it's amazing that that's what we, the level we're at. And then when we got to the game and the players were warming up, and while they were warming up, first we had the NBA player, obviously that just was the catalyst to yeah. shutting down sport. But also we had President Trump give his address when he wasn't the clearest about the travel ban. So the first thing I thought was crumbs, you know, we're going to struggle to even get back in the country. It was uh, it was that moment where we knew that this was going to be serious. Obviously, we played the game and, you know, again, not wanting to be flippant, but it's just a shame 12 hours earlier we hadn't sort of uh, cancelled matches because, you know, the result didn't go our way. But I'm just glad we got back the next day into the country. And I remember we took a red eye back and we were on a charter, so we were pretty safe, but... I still remember it was really eerie going through customs. I felt like we were the only people there. And you know, they were asking you questions and you know, where have you traveled to? And, and then you just, you didn't know where to do. Like, I, could we come back here? Can you, would you go home? Like, and then from there on out, like it, it's just been kind of a different world. Yeah, no, it was crazy. And uh, yeah, it doesn't seem that long ago in a way either. So, all right, I thought it'd be fun to talk, you know, uh, as the president of Atlanta United. And and by the way... Also, did you not get the dress code memo? Well, that's what I was about to say. I was going to say, you know, they have the Men in Blazers podcast. I thought, if you guys know me and Darren, um, and hopefully you, you'll get to know us if you don't, and, you know, I'm the behind-the-scenes digital guy, but I do like to have a good time with Darren, and that's why we wanted to do this. Um, this is how I come to work dressed, and I call Darren the mayor of Atlanta United. He goes out in the beautiful suit, blue shirt usually and shakes hands and kisses baby. So I said, when we called, when I talked to him this morning, I said, look, let's just be ourselves. I'll wear the hoodie, you wear the suit. Well, I'll tell you what, man, you got a tough act to follow because I was fortunate enough to go on the Medin Blazers podcast, which was, you know, a highlight for me and a highlight as well because I used to be a member of the FA in England. So just for people who don't know, the FA is the Football Association. It is really, really old fashioned and old school. Um, I've still got a photo. I remember they take a photo of everybody who's on the FA and the average age is about 75. It's all white male. I mean, it's shocking really. And it's something that, that needs to change. But when you get a member of the FA, you get a blazer. You get to go down to Savile Row. They measure you up and you get a FA blazer. So when I was on Men in Blazers, I got my FA blazer out to turn up on the show. It was like the only chance I got to That's actually great. wear a proper blazer. Well, what's funny is if you want to really know, I, I, I had this on. And before I was even the house, I was like, that is the most wrinkled thing I've ever seen. Like, what are you, you're supposed to go on like, you're doing a video with the president. And so she ironed it for me. So it is, yeah, I am it. a little clean. It is, it <laughs> is at least yeah, well done, yeah, pristine hoodie. <laughs> but no, that's why we did this. Um, this is kind of, we want to be who we are, but I thought it might be fun. And, and I think people can relate. So being at home, and like I said, Darren travels more than anyone I know, and he'll, He'll go to Dubai for like the, you know, <laughs> the, the footballers association. Like there's a picture with Darren. We need to find it. Mikey, we'll find it and put it on this. We're like, you're literally speaking to guys like oil tycoons. And oh, like, the shakes. Yeah, no, shakes. I spoke in Qatar about, <laughs> so it was helping the, basically the World Cup committee because from a football administration perspective, um, yeah, no, that was, a, that was anything an and everything. So I know it's got to be tough. So I thought I would go through a few things. So let's start with conference calls. I feel like all I do now is the video conference calls. And I know you are in more than those than I am, because a lot of times I call you and you're like, I'm on a conference call. I'll call you later. Uh, what's your background? What, what do you go with? So I'm fortunate. I've got a little apartment at our place. So uh, I tend to hole up there, but I did have in the background a spiral staircase that takes you to the mezzanine. It wasn't a great backdrop and we were doing our staff town hall. So I uh, did a little homemade project and built a step and repeat. So I got three of the Atlanta United flags that we give away that I've got boxes around my house. Like my wife is hoping the one thing that comes out of this over the next month or so is that I clear out all the junk that we've got. So I made a step and repeat. It looks really impressive. 
But here's the attention to detail that uh, they went to. So when I'm doing Teams or Zoom, <laughs> it's obviously the shot I get, the test shot, had it in reverse. So <laughs> cleverly, I reverse the flag so that you get the perfect shot when you know, you're promoting it. Anyway, I did the town hall and then I did a press conference today and I saw some of the TV journalists taking a, a screen grab <laughs> and of backwards. it. And it's backwards. So <laughs> I've, all I've done is reverse the reverse. So now I've got to go back and redo it. And it took me ooh, at least an hour. So I'll tell you mine. So, so my wife, like I said, she's more important than me. Um, has a more important job than I do. And so she's kind of taken over the house as her office, gets the team, she has a nice background. It's like a nice like bookshelf with like the, you know, nice dolls and plates and stuff. I literally go on my porch and it's all pollinated. And um, and then one time the I was on a call with you and the Wi-Fi wasn't working. So I went up to the to my bedroom and my kids running around naked in the background. It felt like that BBC reporter yeah, yeah. where like, they have to grab them. But it, 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 is, it is so funny to watch people's background. And, you know, shameless plug, Atlanta United has now put out backgrounds that you can download off uh, atlut.com and Twitter. You can have your own Atlanta United background. But it is funny to see people's background. And it was funny, um, I, I, I would like to get your perspective. I, I saw Rich McKay had like Abraham Lincoln and his, yeah. and his <laughs> any other like terrible backgrounds you've seen? No, I would say it's terrible. It's inspiring, <laughs> isn't it, to see Honest Abe behind Rich. Um, like we said, two great leaders there, Rich McKay and <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. But it is funny, Rich was laughing, we were laughing because we do a call every day at nine o'clock, catch up calls. So, you know, <laughs> we, we literally know each other's houses and he's like, oh, you haven't shaved for three days now, that and <laughs> I know. Uh, I think you saw me the other day and you said I look like the scene from Blair Witch Project. Yeah, because no, you had a really tight angle. I don't know what you were trying to hide in the background, but... <laughs> <laughs> that was the one where, like, I couldn't get good connection on my porch, so I went downstairs. It was raining, so I was literally under my deck, and I had a hoodie on and a beard that had not been shaved in <laughs> weeks. And you were like, good, turn your video <laughs> off. <laughs> um, next, uh... Dealing with kids, I think we we touched on it a little bit, but you and I both have two kids. You have two boys. I have two girls. I mean, how how do you deal with that? Do 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 you let them like do you let them go outside and run around like? Because for me, there's a point in time where I'm like, we got to get them out of the house. Yeah, no, we're trying to do it. Uh, obviously, they haven't got school, so we've got mini school, we call it. Yeah, so we do that too, but my kids don't want to do it. Yeah, they no, just, like, they want to watch Barbie. No, that's true, but we have to <laughs> sort of uh, bribe them. So Miss Faith, my, my wife is known as Miss Faith for mini school. They have the sort of circle time. We've got like a circle we put down. They bring their stuffed toy animals, and they share stories for the day, and then Faith tends to do the morning, and then I'm the PE teacher. So yeah, in the yeah, afternoon, yeah. I've just got... To be fair, it's every time I go to the supermarket, I buy like, I must admit, uh, you know, yesterday I bought mini ice hockey sticks. <laughs> so we just do sports. So whether it's ice hockey, badminton, obviously we do soccer, American football, American Ninja Warrior, anything we can. So that tends to be the afternoon. All right. So I think the challenge is you have to build an American Ninja Warrior course in your backyard. I'm, Did you go to it when it was at Home Depot backyard, by the no, way? No, I didn't. And I mean, to my... I don't know if I can ever show the twins that it was actually in Atlanta because they would be kill so me. Yeah. I took my niece to it, and we were there till like two in the morning, and it was the greatest thing I've ever been to. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, passed me completely by. Never seen it. I actually, love it. Like it's, <laughs> it's a, great. It's a great show. It's great. And the announcers are great. The only thing I'd say, and you look at it and you think, yeah, I could probably do that. So my head. When it comes back to Atlanta, you know, <laughs> perhaps I'll go do it. We went down. They to... did let the staff try. Ah, oh, but here's the time. thing, and it looks done it like it's pretty easy. We went down to Clearwater <laughs> when the season ended, um, and we stopped on the way at like one of these extreme hop ninja places. Boys were ecstatic, so I had to go at the warp wall. Literally, you know, got halfway up, smashed my nose on the board, slid down. It is bloody difficult. So I, I, I had that look. We were, I was fortunate enough, you know, work with the company. Sent an email, hey, can I take my niece to this? Got front row seats, middle. And like the third guy, you know, they, they kind of, you know, they edited a lot for TV, right? So there's some breaks between. And the third guy that went through, he came down on the trampoline to like jump up and grab something. And he didn't hit flush. Yeah. And his knee went backwards. Oh. <laughs> and he fell in the pool. <laughs> 
and I thought my niece was going to throw up. Oh, gosh. And then I thought I was going to throw up. And I was like, I wonder if that's going to make it on TV. And it never did. did. No, I don't think they probably <laughs> want to advertise that. But that might be one for our <laughs> listeners. Um, what were your ninja name? Ninja names. That's a good one. I haven't really thought of one. Like, the kids have got theirs, but I've got to think of what And mine. I will say, too, um, if you're listening to this, watching this, we're happy. We love some topics. Uh, D Eels, ATLUTD, at M Moore, ATLUTD. Very simple. We'd love some topics. We'd love the feedback. We'd love, you know, give us some questions. Give us some topics for, for, the, next, for the next show. Um, all right, now eating. Um, I think that's the other one. I talked about ramen noodles. Kind of big on the Jimmy Dean sausage biscuits. I have not been eating very healthy. How are you? Better, but only because now <laughs> I traditionally just DoorDash every night. And that's been banned now. I'm allowed one a week. So suddenly I'm having to eat leftovers and stuff that, you know, Faith cooked, which she's a great cook, so I'm not knocking that. But normally I'd just be DoorDashing a Thai or a Indian takeaway. I know. I, um, I've done some takeout, Chick-fil-A a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Why is that not surprising? Yeah, right. Um, and it's one of the things where, like, literally, I, I feel such a slob. Like, my wife will be on the Peloton, you know, just grinding. You hear, like, oh, yeah, we got to, you know, we're going up this hill now. We're doing this. And then I'm like, do you need anything from Chick fil A? <laughs> I'm going to run out, uh, getting a couple kids' meals, and I'll get a spicy chicken sandwich. <laughs> it's just, I've been bad. I got to get better. I'm trying to do the thousand push ups in a week, and I'm at 400 yeah. right now. After what, six days? Yeah, five. <laughs> it's only 600 tomorrow, then you'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be good. I can't really lift more than here. So how does that good. work? Have you got to do them in one time per day? Or can you no, you can, you can do them a day. So it's like, 100 and, it's like 130-ish a day. And I did like 200 the first day, and then like another like 50 the next day. And then I'm like, oh, I'll keep this pace and I'll be good. But then you realize how sore you are. Yeah. <laughs> and you, I tried one. <laughs> on Saturday, and I was like, no, 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 I'll wait till Monday. So I've done like 40 today. Yeah. I've done like 40 today. Ooh, but I it's might been try good. that one. That yeah, yeah. Good. All right. So my next one was let's just have some fun. I thought, um, let's talk about the track run um, in Honduras. I think that was one of your more engaged videos, and I was the, the brunt of it. Um, I thought we could take people through the Honduras track run. Yeah, no, that was great. I mean, that was. A case and where Mike, I think you can show that on the uh, over if you yeah. want. And you know, if you remember, it was we're out in Honduras having to play at a neutral venue. So it was a stadium that allegedly was only about 25 years old that felt like it was about 200 years old. That was the funniest the thing. That was the funniest thing where I literally thought that place had been built in 1908. And I was like, uh, I asked Chris Winkler, who's our kind of historian guy, I'm like, when was this built? Like, like 1920, 1930? He looked it up. He goes, 1996 amazing, or 97. <laughs> I was like, what? It's like, oh, it, was, it was younger than the Georgia Dome. Yeah, no, it was crazy. And it was, so, you know, it was our first game. Uh, you could sense there was a bit of apprehension, just, I think, nerves coming into the first match. And that's when real heroes step up. And that's where you, <laughs> Matt Moore, sensed that perhaps there was a chance to lighten the mood. And I think... <laughs> You suggested you could go around, uh, was it two minutes? Two minutes. Two minutes. Me, internal monologue, didn't say it out loud, <laughs> thought, oh, there's no way he's going to do that. And then Carlos backed you. So I saw that as an opportunity, um, a license to print money, so to speak, where I could just wager against, uh, against you doing that with Carlos. And honestly, to this day, I still think that was the best bet I've ever made from a value perspective because I was getting 100%. even money. No way you were going to do it. And to be fair, to this day, I don't think you would have done it if it hadn't have been. I mean, you shot off. It was the funniest thing. You yeah. shot off like you were Usain Bolt, aerodynamic hands. So, you were like running into the wind. You went far too quickly after being told by your coach, Bocanegra, Car not to. Carlos Bocanegra, who is Mr. Fitness Guru and is probably worse than my wife about challenging me to be healthy. I mean... He's always like, oh, you're, you come work out with me. And I'm like, oh, no, I got a conference call. You know, like, uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm my, my neck's sore, you know. Um, he, 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 he loves for me to be healthy. He, he's, like, big on everyone being healthy. And he's, uh, he's like, whatever you do, don't go out fast. And I sprinted out of the game. Wow, you're like a cook out of a bottle. Cool. After the second turn, I was like, I'm going to die. And I even thought in my head, 
I might just like make it, aha, funny mat, just cut across the track, like the grass and just get it over with and have I was, Carlos I was pay you. That, Cause that's immediate disqualification. But and they, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And then, um, but cash I kept going, that, I mean, imaginary I monopoly kept going money, and I saw Brad Gazan and literally Pity Martinez has probably said three words to me in his career, but he was the smile on his face seeing me come around turn three kind of got me to turn to the, to the end. And he grabbed the water bottle and, and shook it at me. And, and, and I was like, man, Pity Martinez is actually like knows who I am right now. <laughs> nah, look, I mean, it was inspirational. <laughs> we had the Chariots of, Muse, uh, Chariots of Fire music <laughs> playing on my phone. So she came down the home straight with, uh, and he did it with like five seconds to spare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I, I think seven actually. Uh, or no, maybe six. But yeah, no, it was great. And I, I thought it'd be funny because you and I, and, and you are a better athlete than me. Uh, growing up, you actually played, you know, college and professionally, but it is kind of funny that we still think we're athletes, you know, um, when we come out here and play in the staff games, which hopefully we can do sooner than later when this thing ends. But it is kind of funny how we, you know, we come out kind of chest out and thinking we're just, you know, really good. And then by the end of the staff game, like you and I are probably the two that are like, and Tony on and I'll do a <laughs> shout at him or like, why do we still do this? No, to be fair, it usually takes me about a month <laughs> to recover between games. Well, after that run, I, I, I my hip hurt and my back hurt for like two weeks. <laughs> it was great. Um, all right, so my last thing, and, I, and I've made you do this. We're, we're getting to time. And uh, like I said, send us on Twitter what you want us to talk about next time. We'll do it. We'll, this will be another thing. Spiked up with Darren and Matt. I thought it'd be fun. And I think you probably have more in your phone than I do. But I think the fun game, should we text the most famous person in our phone? And when this airs t tomorrow, we can put on Twitter if either of them wrote back. Now, this is interesting because <laughs> I did think about this. So for the most famous person, and you need sort of context as well. So, for example, David Becker doesn't count because he's mm -hmm. an owner in the league. So right, that's not right, like a, right, right. a real thing. Now, yeah, I could like Arthur Blank, easy yeah. one, because I I could probably go through channels and get me a back. So for me, it would have been like in my Spurs days, Adele was my celebrity <laughs> to go to. So I watched. I remember it still to this day. Chelsea semi final at Wembley Stadium. Um, she came because she's a big Spurs fan. So she wanted to come to the game. We were in the Royal Box. So the way it works uh, in semi finals at Wembley is you all. So you have 100 tickets for Spurs, 100 tickets for Chelsea. You sit in the Royal Box. You have a meal before the game. She wanted to come, but she was Did they, Hold on. Let's talk about that a little more. But if you haven't been, I've gotten the pleasure to go, Darren, to a director box twice. One at Spurs when I first met you and one in Aberdeen. Did you have the pies, like, at halftime? No, no, no. This is, this is Wembley. This is a Royal Box for the Better than that. Of course, yeah. Because oh, the pies were amazing. No, the pies are good, but uh, you know, <laughs> that's a little bit beneath the sort of semi-final of the FA Cup, to be honest. Um, but the funny thing was, so she she wanted to come, big Spurs fan, um, and she's sending me texts, and she was concerned about eating with everybody and being seen. And I was like, oh, that's disappointing, because to me, she seems like a salt yeah. earth kind of girl. Um, so we found out, and I didn't know this till the time, we needed to find a room we could take her to. And they actually have a special room only for the royal family at Wembley. So it's like a little side room that if Prince William comes, because he's the chairman yeah. of the, um, or in the, you know, <laughs> Prince Charles, whoever it is, they have a room. So we put Adele in this room. And the reason she's so worried is she's pregnant. Uh, and it hadn't broken yet. She right. didn't want to announce it. So it all became apparent. Anyway, we watched the game and she is hilarious. I mean, she swore like a trooper <laughs> the whole game. I mean, Spurs, we weren't very good that game. Uh, we got beat uh, quite heavily, but she is hammering the ref. She's just, it was the funniest uh, thing I had. So. Good bit of banter with her. I've got a mate now. I come to Atlanta United, drop me. Yeah. Every time I try and reach out. I know. I've, I've, just cricket, I've challenged so. you to, hey, Adele, when you watch this podcast, let's get back on it. Come on. You need yeah, it. we had a good time. Atlanta we had fun. United <laughs> needs to be your MLS American club. Adele, we need you. So that leads me to then who is it going to be in terms <laughs> of uh, my celebrity? But I thought like someone who is a legend of football, of the soccer world, who's retired now, but is, uh, you know, is- And by the way, I knew Darren would have like 50 people more famous than mine. But he is, in my view, the best manager there's ever been in terms of um, football worldwide. And that's Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. So I'm gonna 
send Sir Alex Ferguson a text, see if he remembers me, see if he just sort of ghosts me. All right, so mine is someone who I haven't talked to in a while, but he's pretty loyal to me. And I think we text at the same time, and I think the text is, hey, just checking in and making sure you're okay. Yeah. And we'll see if anyone writes back. Mine will be Matt Ryan. Ooh. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I was there for his rookie year at the Falcons, and, but I haven't seen him in a while. You know, big time. Don't wanna, you know, going to be a Hall of Famer, MVP. I don't uh, know how to do I mean, great guy. Played around a golf with him two years ago. <laughs> Uh, when he won the MVP, <laughs> and he is the nicest guy because He's what happened best. was people were coming on the course to He'll do take a photo of anyone, literally, and I yeah. couldn't believe the patience. Like, and I've, you know, worked with a few <laughs> athletes that would have, after the first one, would have been on the phone, you know, to the golf course saying, "You better stop this happening." He, he's unbelievable. Off. He is the nicest guy. Honestly. Nicest guy there is. Yeah, and his wife is even nicer. Um, so let's do all it. Right, we're so gonna, we'll all right, here in, we yeah. go. All right, I'm gonna say <laughs> to Matt Ryan. <laughs> And we'll, when this comes out tomorrow, we'll, ta we'll tweet if anyone wrote us back. Let me make sure I have Matt Ryan in my phone. Here we go. All right. I'm going to say, hey, just making sh hoping... You and your family are doing well. That's yeah. what I'm going to say. Hoping you and your family are doing well. That's it. All right. And we'll let you know <laughs> if Matt Ryan or Sir Alex Ferguson writes us back. I don't even know if that's the same number because it didn't even show delivered. So I may have yeah, to. Yeah, I'm not too <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right darren it's a pleasure we'll um we don't know the cadence of this with everything going on but we'll at least do it at least once a week maybe twice a week we'll, we'll figure that out but this has been fun um like i said at d Eels, uh atl utd at m more atl utd you can hit our main account um it's been a lot of fun and uh look I, it's kind of fun to laugh um I think, you know, when I do the, you know, the video conference calls with your family and friends, that's, that's my favorite parts of the day. And, um, you know, I encourage everyone else to do that too. And it's a tough time. I hope everyone stays safe, keep your social distancing, but at the same time, make sure you're with your family and you, and you, and you can have a good laugh. Yeah. Let me echo that. And, uh, yeah, everyone stay safe, but I hope the family are well and, uh, cheers. And uh, we'll do this again sometime. Thanks guys. <laughs> I don't think that's Matt Ryan's number anymore, by the way. <laughs> Mine's come out with an error, invalid. <laughs>